All right, so we're gonna go over the Neodent Surgical Kit here for those of you that are placing implants. Um, and even if for those of you that aren't, sometimes you may need to open this kit just because of necessity. And so we'll kind of go through what all is in here and what we use most of the time and how we can use it when we need it. So if we're placing an implant, uh, we really just need to be focused on this top row right here, okay? Uh, the cool thing about Neodent is when you're placing your implants, you're gonna kind of run through this sequence every single time and stop at the implant size that you need. And it's as simple as that, not more complicated than that. So, you know, you're gonna start with your pilot, then go with your 2.0 twist drill uh, to length, and then you're gonna start doing your size of your implant to length and stop at the actual size that you want. So if I wanted to place a 4.0 by 10, I'm gonna start with this one, do this one to 10 millimeters, do this one to 10 millimeters, do this one to 10 millimeters. And now depending on the quality of bone that I have, if it's softer bone, I might actually stop here and then go ahead and request my four by 10 implant. If it's normal bone, hard bone, I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way to the 4.0, drill it to 10 millimeters, and then request my implant. There are some additional drills here that we'll go ahead and discuss. If you're an extremely dense bone and you're doing the four by 10, you may wanna to go to the four plus drill. All that is is slightly larger than the 4.0 drill. That way it widens your osteotomy just a bit. If it's ultra dense bone and you've got some cortical plate at the top of the bone at the crest, that's when you move down to this bottom one right here. All that's gonna do is profile the top layer of the bone, remove some of that cortical bone. That way your implant doesn't get jammed on the way in. With the experience of placing implants, this all tends to make a lot more sense, but for the purposes of keeping it simple, I just recommend sticking to this top row and experiencing the different types of bone because that can only be learned through feel and by placing implants through experience. Okay, so say you're ready to place your implant. The next bit you're gonna use is this one right here. This attaches to your implant drill and will attach to the implant itself. This is self-locking, so it'll lock the implant in place. It won't come loose. You can actually shake it with the implant on there. I'm not saying you should, but that's how tightly it snugs it. And then you go ahead and set your drill speeds to the appropriate settings and speed for implant placement. You'll go ahead and place your implant until it torques out. And then you'll, this will automatically unclick from your implant. And then if you need to, you can proceed to manually drive the implant in using these drivers here. The only difference is this is a short one. This is a long one. So you can see these are some square attachments here. Square attachments are meant to be attached to the torque wrench, which is underneath the drills. That's your torque wrench right there. I uh, will make a separate short video going over the torque wrench itself, but let's stick to the drill kit here. So your implant's in, you wanna drive it a little further. You're gonna take either the short or the long, attach that square head, and then you can go ahead and torque your implant in. All right, once that's in, I can go back in the kit. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to get is the prosthetic driver, which is right here. That is going to attach to either your healing collar or your cover screw, whichever you determine to use based on the torque levels of your case. Generally speaking, if you're getting a torque value of 35 plus, you're pretty safe to put on a healing collar below that, or if you have a spinning implant, so to, so to, you know, as we call it, probably safer to put a cover screw on and bury it. We can also discuss that in another video. Those are pretty much the things you're gonna need to use, routine implant placement. As far as what else is in this kit, we'll go over that real quick. This little thing is just a converter, I like to call it. Essentially, say you wanna place your implant in by hand, this latch handpiece is only going to, this latch attachment only goes to your handpiece, but if you actually put it in here and push and turn it, it'll actually lock snug and you can grab the implant and place it by hand. That's optional. Uh, everyone has their own preferences, so see what works best for you. But that's simply all that is. As far as what else is in here, this is meant to be used to screw into the head of the implant, take an x-ray and it'll actually show you, you know, in millimeter markings, how deep you are below the bone level. These are, uh, these, these marks, these black marks are 
actually radio opaque, so they'll show up on your x-ray and you'll be able to kind of see where you're at. Again, preference to use whether or not, um, generally speaking, I don't find much use for it. These are angle pins. So say you do your two millimeter twist drill, you can then kind of put this in to see, you know, am I gonna need a 30 degree custom abutment? Am I gonna need a 17 degree custom abutment? That's all it is. Again, generally speaking, um, don't see much use for those either. These at the bottom here can be quite useful, especially for those first starting out placing implants. Say you go ahead and do your 3.5 drill and you're like, huh, I wanna check my angulation. That's what these are. These are good for checking angulation. So as you can see, they match the size of your osteotomy. You stick that into the osteotomy and then take your PA. The other use for these is say you're drilling two implants for an implant bridge. You can use them as paralleling pins, put one in one osteotomy, put one in the other and see if your implants are more or less parallel to each other. Beyond that, <clears throat> there's another instrument in, in here. This is just a depth gauge. Honestly, I see it as just a fancy, peri uh, uh, fancy perio probe. I mean, that's all it is. It's just some millimeter markings. So you can kind of see how deep your osteotomy is. I like to actually use my implant drills for that. <clears throat> so if I drill a 3.5 and I want to see how deep I am, I actually just stick the drill back in. I'll take it off the handpiece, stick it in, and then see where my mark is. You know, that's an accurate measurement right there. Uh, the only other thing we didn't go off, uh, go over is the extender. That's what this little piece here, it can come in handy. Say you're doing an implant on an area where there's a lot of recession and you'll sometimes experience this, placing an implant. This will be on your handpiece and the head of your handpiece is actually hitting the adjacent teeth and you're not actually able to go to the depth you want to. That's when the extender comes in handy. Again, there's a latch attachment here. You put it on, spin it, and it'll click in and it's extended. To take it off, you just pull it apart, but it won't come off on you on accident. Um, what's great is you do have the measurements here on the bottom of the kit. That way, if you ever kind of forget, you can always reference this to kind of see what these markings on the drills are. That is it in a nutshell. Um, we'll go over the prosthetic kit next.